Paul. Hey, Tommy. Welcome to my old house. Well, thank you. You know, you weren't kidding. You do live near the coast. Oh, we love it here on the coast. Kids have a great time down on the beach in the summer. But I tell you, lately, up here in the northeast, we've been really kind of nervous about the hurricanes coming through. Well, you should be. I mean, you are close to the coast, and with a hurricane, you have to worry about three things. You have to worry about a storm surge. High tides come in, the water level could rise. So you may want to basically pick your house up and put it on stilts. Yeah, we're not going to do that, Tommy. My house has been here 100 years. Okay. Well, now you have to worry about the other things, the wind and the rain. All right. Now, during a hurricane, any object on the ground can be picked up by that wind and thrown at your house as flying projectiles. And if they hit the house at the weakest link, like your windows or your doors or even a skylight, they'll break it and the wind and rain can get inside your house, destroying the content and blowing the structure apart from the inside out. Well, do they have any solutions for me? They sure do. And I got a place I can show you some. You want to go? Right. All right. Now this is a testing facility and it's not really open to the public, but I thought it would be a great place to show you all of the options that there are when covering your windows and doors during a hurricane. And to do that, we're actually going to use this right here. This is actually a cannon that will fire a 2x4 at all of those options and show you how they hold up. It will fire a 2x4 at 34 miles an hour at a window or a door. Wow, a cannon, Tommy? And why 34 miles an hour? Well, 34 miles an hour, even though the winds of a hurricane may exceed 100 miles an hour, that's the speed that an object is picked up and thrown through the air, like a trash barrel or a tree limb, or in this case, a 2x4, pick it up and throw it through the air at those doors and windows at 34 miles an hour. Now, in most cases, you see people boarding up their windows and doors using plywood. Now, it's important that the plywood is cut to fit the opening, and the building code says that that plywood has to be a minimum of five-eighths of an inch thick. Now, that five-eighths of an inch thick plywood is $30 a sheet. Now, as a homeowner, you may go to the Lumberyard or Home Center and say, well, gee, I can get a sheet of half-inch OSB. It's $10 a sheet and save some money. Well, that's what I want to do. I want to save a few bucks. Well, okay, cheapskate. Let's see what happens. Okay, here we go. You can see the cannon is aimed at the OSB. You can see the red laser. That's where it's going to hit it. Wow! <laughs> that 2x4 went right through the OSB and through the window. Looks like you're going to have to get a new window. Wow, I didn't save any money there. You sure didn't. Let's see what happens with the 5 8 plywood now. Oh, the plywood did its job, and the 2x4 bounced right off of it, and the window is still in good shape behind it. That's remarkable how the plywood held up better than the OSB. Well, the plywood is much stronger, and let me show you. The plywood is actually different laminates, and the laminates run in different angles. There's long strands that run this way, another one that runs this way, and so on down the line. And that's what gives it a lot of strength, along with the thickness. Now, OSB, or oriented strand board, are actually small pieces of wood that are actually glued and put together, and it's not strong enough to withstand that force. Now, I know the 5 8 plywood did its job, but that's pretty heavy to lug up to my second floor window. Do you have any other alternatives? We sure do, and let me show you some. Over on this wall, we set up some windows. In this window, we covered with this fabric right here. It's a ballistic nylon treated with resins, and it's really strong. It's held on the building using these brackets right here and these fasteners that stay on the building all the time. Well, this thin piece of nylon is going to protect my window? I don't know. Let's test it and find out. Wow, Tommy, what happened? Well, Paul, the fabric did its job, and the 2x4 didn't enter the building. And in many jurisdictions, that's acceptable by the building code. Yeah, but the window broke. Right, and we installed the fabric as per the manufacturers. But it is a fabric, and it does have some deflection. So under these conditions, when the 2x4 hit the fabric, it deflected enough for the 2x4 to break the window. Now, both the plywood and the fabric have to be installed onto the building every time there is a storm coming. This is a metal shutter that's permanently installed on the exterior of the building. You may have to get up onto a ladder to close it and lock it. They do have metal shutters that you can operate from the inside, and even some that operate remotely. Remotely? Well, let's give it a test. Okay.
Whoa! The window broke on that one. Tommy, what happened? Another broken window? Well, here in the test lab, they have to aim the cannon so it hits in the center of the shutter. In this case, it hit in the center of the shutter exactly where the lock is. Bending the shutter, snapping the lock, opening the shutter. Now, all of the systems that we have looked at already are actually called active, which means you have to do something to protect your window. This is a passive system right here. That means you don't have to do anything. It's built into the system. It has impact glass. It's an insulated window. Now, the outside layer of glass is actually two layers of glass. And in between those two layers of glass is sandwiched this membrane right here. So if a flying object should hit your window, it will shatter like a car window, but you won't get a hole in it. Well, let's test it out. OK. Whoa! Well, it broke the glass, but no hole. And your house is still protected against wind and rain. This is great. Thank you, Tommy, for showing me all these options. It really gives me and my family something to think about living on the coast. I'm glad I could help. Thank you.